Hello LEGO fans and creators, welcome back to Boon Builds for another BrickLink Studio tutorial. In this video I am going to show you how you can import your old LEGO digital designer files into BrickLink Studio, how you can check for issues, some techniques you might use to solve some of the most common compatibility errors you might run into, as well as some other things that you can do with your model once it's in Studio. If you're just starting out with Studio or you're looking for other specific tutorial topics, please look for the links in the video description and check out my playlist that is full of BrickLink Studio tutorials. All right, let's dive in. So here we are back at the welcome screen. I have just opened Studio. The first way that you can import one of your LDD files is by clicking the import button. That'll bring up a window where you can explore the files you're looking for. Or if you are in a new empty document, you can also go to file import. The project doesn't actually have to be empty. You can import a model into an existing model, but I'm going to click file, import, import model. And here is a folder that has some of my old LDD files in it. And I'm going to import Benny's Batwing. And you can see it loads it as one complete submodel. So if I click on this, I just get one thing that I can move around when I select it. I can change its orientation by clicking the arrow keys on my keyboard. But if I want to get in here and make some modifications to this model, I need to click on the submodel. And down at the bottom right, I click release. Now you can see that all of the independent items are highlighted. And if I select anywhere or press escape, I can just look at the model and begin to highlight individual elements to be edited. Now you will notice there are some elements that do not import properly coming from LDD to Studio. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes and identify the pieces that did not come in in the correct orientation. So there's a couple of these here. I can just grab it, change the orientation, place it back where I want it. There's another one, do this here. You can see this Technic Shooter is a piece that came in as two different pieces. So I've got this one right here, and then this is a piece of that larger element. I don't need both, so I'm gonna delete that one. This one just needs to get the orientation changed, and I can put it right back where it's supposed to go. And it looks like it's snapping right about there. There's one of those on the other side. You might see some other issues I've got here, like these flexible elements. I'm gonna fix this other launcher on this side, and that looks like it's where it's snapping in the correct place. Let me double check. I'm gonna zoom in here. It looks like it's a little high, so I'm going to use my S key on the keyboard to bump it down. I wanna set my grid to a fine grid and then I can push it down to exactly where I want it to be. That looks right to me. Does it look like the dart is in the right place? Looks like the dart is in the right place. I'm gonna go back to the other one. It's probably a little high as well. Just zooming in here, using my mouse with the right mouse button to click and drag to move the orientation of the entire view of the model. I'm gonna use my S key again to bump this one down. That looks like it's in the right position. Okay. Let's see. There's another item here that needs to be moved into a different position. And that can be put back in place. I'm getting pretty close to having all of the issues resolved for element orientation. I'm going to look from underneath. My view is obscured a little bit by the grid that you see from underneath. So I'm going to go to view at the top left and click hide ground. Now I have an unobstructed view underneath. I'm not seeing any other pieces that are in the wrong orientation. I can turn on collision and we'll see Looks like perhaps these are still in not quite the right position. Where do they go? 
The projectile launcher doesn't appear to actually have any points for snapping, so I'm just gonna use my keyboard shortcuts A, S, D, and W to move that dart launcher into the right position. And now that I have it just right, I'll select it and put it back onto the assembly. There we go, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna clone that, and I've got one to put on the other side. So I'll delete the conflicting models over here. And there we go. Now my projectile launchers are exactly the way I want them. I see a couple of pieces here. I actually just applied these and they don't fit because under here there is a brick. And these are not the style with the stud cutouts on the side to be compatible with that. So that means I actually used the wrong piece in the old model. So I'm going to click on that and click find alternatives. And now we can see here is the one, the wedge plate with stud notches. Get these put in the right place. And I'll highlight both of them and change them to light bluish gray from my content colors palette. Delete these. And then let's see, I'm gonna save these hoses for the end. I'm looking around for other issues in the collision. Looks like there is a wheel on this axle that collides slightly with this brick. You can see both of those are grayed out. I'm just gonna try sliding this. Can I just slide it slightly? Yep, there we go. And that is in a good position for not conflicting with any collisions. Looking around, I don't see any other collisions. Now I'm going to move on to these flexible hoses. While Studio does support flexible pieces, not all flexible pieces actually have the flexible function yet. Studio is updating all the time. I have seen Studio go from zero flexible elements to many flexible elements. My hope is that this particular element will be flexible in the near future. For right now, I'm just going to use something else as a stand-in. So I'm gonna type hose in my parts palette search bar. And the one I used, I can see the information down at the bottom, 12 long. So I'm just going to do hose 12. I want to see if there is something in the same color. So I'll go to light bluish gray and select hide unavailable colors. And now I can see that I get a flex tube in light gray for $4.47. This is just a stand-in, so I don't really care how much this one costs. I'm going to bring it up here insert one end into one of these headlight bricks. Click on the element, click on the flexible element tool, come to the other end and grab it and start moving it around. And I can use the arrow keys to orient this in the proper direction. And I'm gonna bring it down here to this snot brick. This can take some manipulation from some different angles, but now I have it going exactly where I want it to go. All I have to do is click C on my keyboard to clone this, and I can put the other one in the other spot directly next to the one that's already done. I wanna do the exact same thing on the other side, so I can click both of these and come down to the bottom right and click copy and mirror. And now I have these two elements that can be oriented to insert in those snot bricks on the other side of the model. There we go. That looks good to me. I'll delete these old inflexible tubes for now. Those are just a stand-in for now. I'll replace them when I can if I'm able in the future. Or if I share these instructions with other users, it's fine for them to use this type of tubing. 
Um, if I am going to do a render, I think this will be fine. Uh, if I'm going to build the model myself, I can always choose not to buy those and buy the ones that I know are going to work in real life. Now, the last thing I want to do is make sure that there aren't any pieces in this model that don't actually exist in the colors that we see them in here. So I'm going to come over to the right hand side of the screen and go to color validator. And you can see I've got just a number of elements that do not come in these colors. So I could click auto fix. If you're in a hurry and you want to save time or if you have a lot of general elements in your creation and you're not too concerned about the auto selections that studio might make auto fix could be a great solution for you i'm going to go ahead and go through one by one and see what we've got going on here so this is a one by four brick without bottom tubes so this is going to be a brick that either imported wrong or perhaps I used the wrong brick when I built this model over an LDD. So that's actually a brick that only comes in transparent colors. So I'm going to want to replace those with the proper elements in that color. So I'll go ahead and take a moment to do that. I'm gonna drill down and find these. There's one right there. I'm using the L to hide some of the elements that are preventing me from seeing the entire brick. Put in a one by four in my search bar and I'm gonna select dark bluish gray from the drop down. Now I can delete this and put the proper brick in its place. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other four of those bricks. So now I've replaced those and you can see that the one by four in dark bluish gray is no longer on my color validator list. I can unhide all of the elements that I hid while working on that by going to the top right and clicking show all. Looks good to me. Now for the rest, I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto fix and see what happens. If I click auto fix, now there is nothing left on the list except a Technic brick six by eight open. And it is in light bluish gray, replace color, Light bluish gray. Let's see what happens. Apply. That looks to me like... If I come to this brick... And I click on the colors... That is not actually available in any colors. So that looks like an error. I'm going to ignore it for now. Because I know that brick exists in that color. And I'm looking around the model for anything else that looks like an issue to me. And it seems like pretty much everything is good. I'm seeing some green come through here. And it looks like there's something missing from right there. I'm going to undo the last auto fix. My hunch is that there's another one of these under there. And it's oriented incorrectly. Got that. In this case, I can't quite tell what's going on, so I'm actually gonna go back to LDD to open the original model and see what is in that place. And I can actually see in LDD that element didn't load either, so I'm just gonna go back to Studio and figure out what element I can put in that place. And I'm thinking like a four by six plate is gonna do the trick. I could look at the physical model over there and figure out what is actually existing in that spot. But for right now, I'm just going to find something suitable. I can do show all. And now when I look around the model, looks pretty good to me. I think everything in this model will work out if I want to use this to order the parts to build in real life, or if I want to dive into the instruction maker to start turning this into a shareable instructions to put out into the world. Now, if you want to do things like make instructions for your model, if you want some other tips and tricks, please look at the Bricklink Studio tutorial playlist in the video description. If you liked this video, I hope you'd give it a thumbs up. I wish you the best of luck with Studio. I certainly enjoy it. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to Boone Builds and hit that bell icon so you get a notification when I publish new videos. I hope you have an awesome time with Studio. Good luck with your old LDD models. And until next time, go build something amazing.